Hello. Hello. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, we'll start with what we normally do, which is rereading a little bit in the past before starting into the next, the new stuff. Yep, let me just go full screen real quick. All right. So from left to right, okay. Um, Ani, mo kairo. Which is just Ani, I'm, I'm home. Or it's come good, home. Yes, yes, it's, it's come home basically. It's let's go home already. Mo has a already kind of meaning in this context and Kaidu is dictionary form, and now we're in kairo form, and ro makes it into let's do this. And gotcha. the next part. Uh, jiboraku matte mo, matte mo. Ani wa motoite konai. Do you know what this te mo is doing? It's te form plus mo. Te mo. Um, Shibarakuma. Wait! Gosh. I think I've muted my headset. Oh, God damn it. Um, what does mate mean? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi. Hi. What does mate, mate mean? is to wait. Yes. And how about shibaraku? My hint is that it's a time phrase. Shibaraku. Mm -mm. Shibara sounds familiar. Something yeah, to a, do with a while. Yes. Think. So in this context, shibaraku means for a while. So wait a while is shibaraku matte. However, they had it added a mo here because ani wa modotte konai. What does modotte mean? Uh, won't wait. Uh, won't return. Modotte means to return to a location that's not your home. And konai means to, is a negative of do not approach um, the narrator. So will not return home. So what do you think kemo means then? Since it's combining the idea of waiting and Annie not coming home. What do you think it means? So, Annie didn't come home or doesn't want to come home after a while. That's a good guess, but it actually means even if he waited, Annie will not come back, will not return. That's what it means. So, mo basically means even if. And he could have done this action. It's not really specified, but it's just saying no matter how long Jack wait for Annie, Annie will not come back to him. Is just what it means. Annie, and then what is going here? So Annie, suroto, suroto, Annie no kaike kai dekita. Koi ga kai dekita. Ah, koi ga kai dekita. So we can start over here with suru. Do you know what verb suru is? Suru. Sounds very familiar. Very uh, it, mm, Makes it present. Basically. Or voice suru. So, guessing. Uh, so, suru is one of those irregular birds that becomes shimas. And a lot of times they'll be combined with certain things. For example, we, we saw in this book, sukipu suru, which means to do the act of skipping. So, suru just means to do. So the suruto means to do this action that occurs in the last sentence, which is yelling out ani to. 
So basically, Annie is shouted out, and then Annie no koi ga kaite kita. What does the second part of the sentence mean? Say Annie's voice mm-hmm. kaite kita. Annie's voice has returned, or yes. at least it's gone towards the speaker. Yes, exactly. It has returned toward the speaker. Perfect. So basically, Jack calls out to Annie, and in return, Annie's voice returns back to Jack. But physically, Annie's still far away. And what does Annie say? Annie says, "Oni-chan, uh, chotto kite, kite, chotto kite, kita, mm. chotto kitai." Uh, so kite is te form, and kita is ta form, which the difference is the tenses. Um, do you know what ta form is? It was for past tense. Yes. Now te te has lots of different meanings depending on lots of different contexts, such as you know right here we have a te form with kaite kita, but this te right here, which is te form. With nothing after it, just te, just kite. This makes it into a mere or an order. It's something she says, do this. That's why people say it basically kudasai has been dropped off. So kite kudasai. And then they just dropped off kudasai because Annie is Jack's little sister. She doesn't need to say use please and thank you with him. Doesn't need to be polite, yeah. No need to be polite. Orange. So, kite is what she says. So, what does kite mean then? Kite. So, in this case, it's just to uh, hear. Basically. Or to listen. It, uh, that's the wrong kanji. So, kite, with a long e. Kite. And it also has this kanji. It has a mon and a mimi, which means gate and ears. Kite, the long e, that means to listen or to ask. You can't think of it like the gate to opening a conversation is to listen and ask questions. Well, I see. It, um, com- ha- comes with mirai, I think, mirai, which means future. So you need to come. And I'll see you in the future. The future comes toward you. Uh, I don't know if that helps or not. <laughs> I don't know. You can think about like a pine cone. Does that help? Hmm. Like, come falling at you from trees. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. If I put it like that. <laughs> um, so kite means come. And as we saw here, kaite kita, that same kita, the voice return, it came toward the narrator narrator and over here with konai with um modote konai which is it did not come toward the narrator so right here the the narrator the speaker is annie so she's using kite as in come toward me the speaker so kite meaning doesn't really change that much when it's being used to modify verbs it still means approach the same thing yes yeah. It's almost just like modifying that. So chotto just means a little bit. So come here just for a little bit. And then here's our next sentence. Right. Uh, Jack wa... oh, yare yare. That's a strange word. Omoi naika. Omoga. Omoi nagara. Omoi nagara. Oh, wait. No, I missed a to. Hi. To omoi nagara. Mori no naga naka he or sorry no it wasn't he it was e yeah mori no naka e haite ita jakko wa yare yare to omoi nagara mori no naka e haite ita so do you know what yare yare meant mm. So it means good grief. Yes. And then you have to omoi nagara. What does that mean? So 
he's like good grief and toy oh my nagara uh, so he did the omoi yeah. while sing yare yare or um, at least while feeling yare yare to, to um is something that gets combined to certain words like omoi or you or yobu or kangairu all those words get to and it's quotation to so omoi which comes from omo means to think so he thinks i quote yare yare so mm. nagara as you think that means wow so while thinking good grief while thinking good grief jaku wa mori mori no naka e haitte what does this part mean mori no naka e haitte so he entered the forest yes and now we have the itte do you vaguely remember how this is different than kita or ita kita how are they different so hmm i would assume that kita is towards the speaker and yes. ita is either instant or away from the speaker it is away from the speaker so this whole story is kind of like sold in the third person where there's kind of like this magical person like you can kind of picture if you're watching a movie and there's like a camera somewhere so the camera is just situated somewhere and it's watching jack and to some extent it can read jack's mind like he's magical power but uh so because of this jack is moving away uh jack is you know going into the forest but the camera has not yet moved camera is still stationary at this moment of the story is how you can think about it so it's basically saying jack is leaving the current scene and we're going to change locations if this was like a movie being filmed is basically what that's telling us so kind of think so basically include yourself into stories you read in japanese you are there as well even though nobody's talking to you <laughs> um and next is this oh 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 no this this is a key how did i get there oh yeah the tree pit <clears throat> Um, Kino Kino Hoga Clock You he oh Mm Kino Haga Kino Haga You he oh Abite Mm Kiniro So Kino Kiniro Kiniro Are the different words Kiniro So if you're talking about uh Gin Iro that would be silver and keen iro is not silver what color is keen iro keen okane is it gold yes okane gold. yeah money yeah but it does sound a lot like silver cuz silver is just with a g sound so i don't know if that was what was confusing you for a second yeah, kiniro. Ah, uh, it's right as well one word, but yeah. Kiniro ni kagayai deiru. Hai hai hai. So, what is the subject here? The subject is the tree trees ho or tree no ho. The ha, the ha of the tree are the subject. The subject is uh, ha. No. And ha means leaf. So specifically, we're talking about leaves that happen to belong to trees. Um, trees. And, these, okay. and these leaves, they have abitad. They have, what does abiru mean? To be like, how do I explain that? It's like when you're taking a shower, it's just yeah. going on you. Yes, exactly. To be bathed. And what did it get bathed in? What did it soak up? Yuhi. What is Yuhi? Is that sunlight or rain? It's not rain. It is a kind of so light. It should be sunlight. He means light. However, sunlight is a little bit wrong. It's not incorrect, but sunlight in English tends to insinuate daylight. But is this daylight right here with that U? 
Uh, well, I'm not too sure. Um, so you, I, I'm not sure like what words. I was like, you got that. <laughs> That's what you wear. Um, you means evening. And it occurs in other words as well that I just can't think of on the top of my head for some reason whenever this word pops up. But this little katakana ka, ta, this katakana ta, katakana ta, for whatever reason, when it's a hiragana character, it means nighttime. Why? I'm not really sure. <laughs> but so this is evening light. So rather than midnight, it's the sun's still out. Evening night. Yes, evening light. So the sun sets light, basically. So this light is very, you know, gimiro. Or in other cases, a lot of times they'll be pink. You know? Like normal, norm, normal sunlight would be yellow, right? Yep. But because we have some yuhi, the color is different. And because of that, these ha's will be kagayaiteiru in different colors. Uh, what does kagayaku mean? Kagayaku? Kagayaku. Kagayaku. Uh, okay. Kagayaku. Shiny? Yes, exactly. Kagayaku means to shine. So these leaves are shining because they have absorbed the evening light. So how are they shining? Like what color? Uh, where was the color mentioned? Oh, previously it was mentioned. Oh, not previously, right here. Skin iro. What color is skin? I forgot. Skin. Uh, gold. Yes, gold. So the leaves of the trees soaked up evening sunlight, causing them to shine in a way that was gold. That's what that whole thing says. Very random, just coming out there and saying, it's like, gotta, gotta explain the setting. Uh, and now Annie says this. Uh, kocha. Uh, ah, kocha. Kochiyo. 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 Yeah. Kochiyo. Onii-chan, hayaku. What's so big brother, hurry up. Yes, exactly. And how about kochi? Kochi is like, I can't remember if it was here or like quickly. Uh, it's not quickly. Hayaku is the quickly. Kochi kind of means here. Specifically, it means in the direction where I am, where I am, basically. Like, it kind of means here. But like, it's more like this way, I would say. This way. Which is like, kochira, kochi, I think. Kochi. Kochi yo, kochira dozo. <laughs> um, now we're going to do a little bit of practice. Can you, using the, some of the nouns and the adjectives from above, make the phrase a book that looks interesting? book that looks interesting how would you say that in japanese hey um so definitely with a hon to begin with hon. And da -da. Hon. it's a bit that says look hmm <clears> Hon <throat> o omoshiroi, but that would just mean interesting book. So that is a really good guess. So moshiroi is an adjective. How do adjectives get added to nouns? Mm. How do moshiroi? Was it, what was the letter? Was so it yeah. So um, some, some words will get na, 
added to it. But currently we're looking at an E adjective, which is omoshiroi. So you don't really need to add anything, but you do need to move things around. How would you say interesting book in Japanese? Omoshiroi o hon. It just would be omoshiroi hon. O, which is the particle you had over here, is used for direct object objects to connect them to verb. Is omoshiroi a verb? Uh, it is not. It is not a verb. So we cannot use o with it. It doesn't work. Sometimes you might be able to use no or ga or wa, but o, o means you have a verb, sweetie pie. <laughs> it goes, this guy is married. <laughs> he has a verb, but we don't have. So omoshiroi hon is how you say interesting book. So the part you didn't really remember was the looks part. So do you remember what soul, what soul means? Soul. So like, so your koto, like correct? That's sometimes it does mean that. Um, so you people maybe, um, but soul has lots of meanings. And in this specific context, you can use it to mean that something looks interesting. Similarly, you can also use it to mean things like something I heard something I heard that something's interesting. So soul can be attached to adjectives like e adjectives by deleting the e and doing omoshiro soul. Omoshiro soul. So this means right here. Looks interesting. Omoshiro soul. Now, is soul a noun or an adjective? Which do you think it is? Uh, an adjective. It is an adjective. And it doesn't end with an I, I see. It does not end with an I, Hayagana character. So what, what do we have to add to it in order to glue it to the noun? We would use a uh, no. Yes. So altogether, how would you say looks like an interesting book? Looks like an interesting book. Or a book that so, looks any of those. Oh, okay. So, omoshiri so, oh, sorry, omoshiro so hon. Oh, but you forgot something. How are we gluing this to hon? The, ah, uh, the na. So, omoshiri so na hon. Yes. Now it's all nice and glued together. Omoshiro so na hon. Perfect. Now, how about a boy who loves to read books? And here's a hint. Daisuki is an adjective. So what do we need to add to daisuki? It does not end with the hiragana character I. E. So daisuki na. Yes. Now, how do you think you do this? Mm -mm. Let's see. Doko or other. We can start with something a little simpler. How do you say, I like books? How would you say that? Uh, hon no suki. Hon no suki. That is a good guess. This specifically means like books of love, perhaps? Hon no suki. It's a little odd just because it's a noun following in an adjective like a na adjective but what you actually want is a different particle here do you remember what particle goes with like when you're using suki is it like a wa or a ga do you think uh i would go with the ga yes the reason for this is that the subject is normally something else something else is doing the suki the liking so because of that we can't use wa because wa is only used to mark the subject. Ga is like the topic that we're talking about. So we have hon, so I love books would be watashi wa hon ga suki. So we don't really need the watashi wa. We just have hon ga suki. How would we add that to the a boy who loves book? How would we make this noun phrase? So now we could just say otoko wa hon ga suki. That would be the boy loves book. So I'm using who here 
to kind of show that this phrase is being used to describe boy, but it's not that boy is necessarily the subject, if that makes any sense. So I'm trying you, I'm trying to get you to use basically a phrase, an adjective phrase to describe a noun, like a book that looks interesting was omoshiro sou na hon. You see hon is at the end of the sentence. So that's like my goal I'm trying to get. Hmm. So you're right that otoko wa hon ga tsuki would be a boy loves books. But it's not a boy who loves books. Those are slightly different phrases. We want to describe the boy, not say what the boy is doing. And this is how you can build very large sentences in Japanese. Like the boy who loves books is reading a book. You couldn't really make that sentence with otoko wa hon ga suki. That's just a complete sentence. You can't really do the add the part of the boy bought a book or something. You can't add that. So how would you make this right here all to just be describing the noun? Very similar to what you did last time. Hmm. So I'm not sure if I could use soul here, could I? So soul would be, it looks like a boy that likes books, but you could do that. You could do that. That'd be if you didn't know him very well. And you could do that if you want. I think that'll make it easier. So, otoko, otoko wa, otoko wa. So, if you look at the last sentence, did we say hon wa? Did we do that? Hon wa omoshiro so na. That book looks interesting. We didn't really say that, did we? No. Hmm. So, what did we do? We kind of we shuffled things shiro. around. Yes, we started with the adjective phrase. So, we would start with hon ga tsuki. That's where we start. How do we attach this to a boy? Hon ga suki. Eh, eh, eh. Hon ga suki. Can I say hon ga suki? Uh, suki na otoko. Yes. That'd be a boy who loves books. So when we have this, we can continue the sentence and say, Hon ga suki na otoko wa nanasai this, which is the boy who loves books is seven years old. So this allows us to make longer sentences. But what we had before, the sentence is done. We can't continue the sentence. We can only do that teeny tiny guy. The boy loves books rather than our goal being a boy who's seven years old. That boy specifically is the boy who loves books. So that's what makes this useful. The whole adjective phrase being used to describe the boy. How do you think we could say the seven-year-old boy loves books? How do you think we could do that? How, do, how could we shuffle the sentence around? My hint is the glue for nouns is no. Mm, give me a second. I think yeah. my head's unplugged again. Testing. Hello. I can hear you. Okay. I can hear you too. Okay. 
So we made up the sentence, um, Honga daisuki na otoko wa nanasai da, which is the boy who loves books is seven years old. How could you rephrase this so that it says the seven year old boy um, likes to read books? How could you rephrase it? My hint is that no is the glue between um, nouns. Interesting. Okay, so the boy who is seven years old likes to read books. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Just in case you didn't know the words. Okay. What do you do? Boy was seven years old. So do do Nana Sai. Nana Sai. I have to connect that to the person. Uh what is the I couldn't say oh no. Yes. So Nana Sai no Otoko. How do we continue the sentence? We have the seven-year-old boy. He likes books. How do we say that? So, nanasai no otoko wa. And then I can just bring that old sentence back, which was hongaski or hongaski na. Yep. Actually, there's nothing after it. So, just ski. Hongaski. So, hongaski na would make it kind of more like, gives like a different like connotation. Like, oh, yeah, he does love books. Yeah, that's how that works. So, yeah, very complicated <laughs> stuff. But I wanted to hammer that in there a bit from our last learning from a while ago. Um, now yep. we are, um, so we've learned like ni katamuku, which means um, to shine in this way, or ni kiku, which means to ask that person or to listen to that person. And do you know what ni ushiro meant? Ni oshiro, so uh, that behind, I don't yeah. know. Behind that. Thing. That behind? Ah. Exactly. So now we have this new guy. Can you read it for me? Kino shita ni ita, or tats. Yes. Uh, do you know what shita means? Shita means someone lower than you or under you. Yes. It, means, it just means lower or under something. So ki is a noun and we're using no to act as glue for shita so what does ki no shita mean under the tree exactly and now we have tatsu do you know what that means to stand up yes so to stand under the tree is ki no shita ni tatsu standing underneath the tree so tatsu what form is tatsu written in Tatsu, it's the dictionary form. Yes. Do you ha know how it could change to be in te form? Uh, tate. Yes, tate. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. And now we have this to read. Evergreen. Uh, ani wa okina shita no, or just kashi. Kashi, yes. And kashi okina, means evergreen. Kashi. I just like that. This is something you need to know. So I just kind of stuck that there. Evergreen. Uh, kashi no kino shita ni. <clears throat> uh, tatte ita. Tatte ita. So what do you think this means? So, ani okina uh, kashi. So a big evergreen is kino shita. It's under the tree. Data. And Annie just stood up under the tree. But let's look at the particles. Wa is attached to Annie. Ni is attached to Shita. And all these guys, these guys have nose. These guys all just have glues. They just have glues. They're in a weird little chain. So the things that are important are the ni and the wa. What is wa marking right here with Annie? 
So Annie is the subject. Yes, and okay, she is talking about Annie here. the verb. What is the verb? Dateita. So okay. she got up. So specifically, Annie is standing. So that, that's what Annie wa tateita. Annie is, was standing, that's what that says. And me is telling us the location. So where was Annie standing? She was standing behind a tree or the under a tree. Yes, under. Which is so under a tree, no kashi, which is evergreen, mm. which is also a big kashi. Yes, exactly. So Annie is standing underneath a true uh, an evergreen tree that is really big, is what this is. A huge evergreen tree. So now I'm going to be telling you something that isn't super important to know, but it's a really like interesting thing about Japanese. So we have okina right here, and this is actually the pre-noun adjectal form. I had to Google what the heck it was called. Form of an e adjective. So uh -huh. ok, this means the verb is normally seen as an e adjective. But it's been turned into a not adjective to kind of increase the sense of intimacy with what noun is modifying and to make it more obvious what is being modified. So this right here is telling us that the kashi is what's big. Specifically, this tree is big for being an evergreen tree, is what this is. Rather than shita, what does shita mean? Under. Yes, under. So we're not saying the under is big. We're, we're saying that the evergreen tree is big. That's what the na is telling us. For example, if we had oki kashi no ki no shita, that would actually, the ki, oki would actually go older to the bottom to be modifying shita. Mm. Which would mean the and big the, below. It doesn't really make sense. Below. It's a bad yeah. sentence in this case, but grammatically, the E adjective would skip over all these nouns and just go over the modify the bottom noun. And I'm just letting you know this because there is a sentence future on where an E adjective is being used to modify the thing way at the bottom. So it's just a cute little like, wow, that's so interesting. Because it's not something that's really taught in Japanese classes. This is more like a Japanese in the wild. I had to Google what the heck that thing. I was like, I knew it was like modifying kashi, but like the word for it. But yeah, super interesting. But yeah, it also kind of makes it like almost a little tiny bit more dramatic. So just they call it like the sense of intimacy <laughs> is a little a bit. bit yeah. Um, apparently, um, every e adjective and non adjective, if you specifically Google every single one, there's a little bit difference in what it can be used for. Like oki can only be used for physical size when it's a na adjective, while e adjective could be used for referring to like ages, for example. Oh, wow. Some, sometimes there's more restrictions as well. Um, nice. Okay. So now we have this vocab word right here. Can you read it for me? U B I. Hmm. Sashite. Yes. U B sashite. What do you think yubi that sashite. means? Yubi hmm. sashite. Yubi sashite. Hmm. I mean, it's pointing left. Um, ah. Hidari ni yubi sashite. Hidari ni yubi sashite. So the left, the night sashite. <laughs> kind of. So yubi sashite means to point. Uh, hidari ni ni means toward the left, since he said he was point the finger is pointing to the left. Yeah. So, yubi by itself just means finger. Finger. So yubi is doing sasu. The yubi is pointing or is stabbing something. Maybe this might become <laughs> yubi sasu means to point. So this right here, what form is this in? Uh, te form. Yes. What do you, how would you turn this into dictionary form? Uh, shite. Or the tone, maybe I changes it. Um, 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 um. So shite is te form. How do we get dictionary form from that? 
指し、あ、した。So、uh, when you said tougher. our goal is to get an oo sound in here. An oo sound. Yes.、Hmm. And not an e sound. Uh, she thought. Pull? That doesn't make so much、in? sense. Hmm. How do、uh, we add an oo to she and take out an e from she? Sure. Yes. <laughs> So, shu is what I want to say as to actually getting the oo sound from you. So, shu. Shu is not really a word in Japanese. Like, you don't really use shu unless you're doing you with it, but just shu, like shu and oo. So, instead, they say su. Yubisasu is the word we're looking at. Yu, bi, yu, bi, sa, su. Because su. S plus the oo sound, S plus oo versus S plus I. S plus I. Does C exist in, in, in Japanese? C? C. Does that exist in Japanese?、Uh, don't, I don't think so. It does not. So in Japanese, they say C when you add an I to S, it becomes C.、Uh, so when you add an oo to S, it becomes SU. Su. So both of these、uh, are the ph- phoneme S in Japanese, both she and su. And it just has to do with how it changes depending on what vowel is in front of that phoneme, that、uh, sound S. Similarly,、uh, if you want an English example, we have the sound T. T. Can make lots of different noises depending on what's surrounding it. For example, how is this word pronounced?、Uh, mizu. Uh, in English, eagle day. Oh, <laughs>、uh, water. Yes. So what you said out loud was water. You did not say water, you said water. You made a, not actually a D sound, you made a flap. So that's what's going on in Japanese. They're making sh. When you add an E in front. While in English, when we have vowels basically surrounding a T, it turns into a tap. <laughs> so, random linguistics thing just jumping in there. So, I don't know if that helps you remember that. Somewhat. <laughs> I don't know. It would help me because linguistics is fun. But <laughs> that's just like what's going on there. That's like the thought process behind that. Um, now we have this. Do you know what this word means? Pretty common word. Miru. So to see. Yes. And what is the te form of miru? I've written the mas form, ni mas, in order for you to know what kind of, if this is a do verb or an u verb. So mi mas.、Uh, the te form would be mi te. Yes, exactly. Mi te. That's a mi and then a te. No glottal stops because this is a ru verb because ru just gets killed and there's no i being added. <laughs> so, just a refresher, what does yubi sasu mean? Yubi sasu. So, it means,、uh, well, if it was hidari、uh, yumi sasu, <laughs> that would be left direction or pointing to the left. Yes. So, what about if it's just yubi sasu on its own? What would that mean? To point. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Okay, now we have our sentence to read. Ah,、uh, hora, mite, ani ga,、uh, nawabashi ga, nawabashi go, o yu, yu bi sasu, yu bi sasu. Hora, kore mite. What does this part mean? Hora. So, like, hey, look at this. Exactly. And what does Annie do as she says that? Annie ga nawabashi go. So Annie is pointing at the rope ladder. Exactly. Perfect. Now, right over here, we're doing a little bit refresher. Remember, noun no particle is a different thing than verb no particle. They look similar, but totally different. 
Can you do me a favor and read this sentence right here? Hi. So, Jack wa shizen o kansatsu kansatsu suru no ga some kanji with a hi. Weird kanji. <laughs> what could that say? Daisuki da. Hi. What does this mean? So, Jack shizen o kansatsu is absur- observing nature. No gataiski. So he likes observing nature. So what is this no doing right here? It's connecting the shizen ga kansatsu with the daisuki. So he likes doing that. Specifically, it's actually connecting the verb sudu, which is kansatsu sudu, with the particle ga. So you cannot hmm. say um, kansatsu sudu ga. That has a totally different meaning. That'd be like ga and then like comma, like a but. Kansatsu suru dakedo kind of like <laughs> meaning. Uh, but this is ga as in the ga that tells you what you like, the topic of the sentence. So particles like wa, ga, ni, mo, uh, eh. These particles can only be attached to nouns. You can't attach a verb to these particles. It doesn't make any sense. They're like, what are you doing? Um, so because of this, in Japanese, you need to turn the verb into a noun when you want to attach them. And all you do to do that is dictionary form plus no. Boom, you're done. Uh, sometimes they might use koto instead to have slightly different like meanings, but the basic way is sudo plus no. That's all they're doing is turning this verb plus um, direct object into a noun phrase. Just a phrase about a noun. They're like, it's, it's a noun. In English, we don't tend to really do complex stuff to our things. We tend to just change the way we pronounce words slightly to tell us if it's a noun or a verb and like oh you mothered her for example uh yeah. turning a noun into a verb but like the opposite we we don't like change stuff too much and but in japanese you have to change things in order to convey that meaning so that's what the verb plus no plus particle so knowing that this is Jack loves to absorb na- observe nature. How would you say Jack loves to read books? Jack loves to read books. So, do, do, do. Hon, 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 hon wa yomu. Or, that doesn't make too much sense. Yeah, or, I need to change the yomu. Hmm. Yomu is actually correct. But this right here means the, the, the book is doing the verb of yoming. Is the verb reading something? Is, is, is the noun? Is, I mean, is, is the book reading something? Oh, uh, yeah, no. A magical so, Jack. Hi. Jack wa? Jack wa? Um, I need to connect the two. So, Jack wa? I can't put daisuki here or ski here. Hmm. So we have Jack yomu, ka. which means to read. What is Jack reading? Ah, uh, hon. So yes. Jack wa hon Jack o wa yomu. Hon o, yes, exactly. Jack wa hon o yomu. This means Jack reads books. How would we make this say Jack loves to read books? Mm-mm-mm. So Jack wa hon o yomu. Uh, all of this no uh, daisuki. No, ga daisuki. Ah. Yes. Jack wa hon o yomu no ga daisuki. So, what is the no doing right here? It's connecting the, uh, the, 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 the daisuki to the yomu. Kind of. It's, it's connecting the particle ga and making yomu into like a noun so that it's okay to connect it to daisuki. Mm. So ga is actually what's connecting yomu and daisuki together. And daisuki. No is just saying you can do this now. 
It is okay. She can now use it. It is grammatical. That's all it's doing. It's it's making it possible. It's the friend. What is the o doing here? It is connecting the reading bit to the book. Yes. And how about wa? It is suggesting that Jack is doing all of that. Yes. Or Jack is a subject here. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. Cool. And um, you already read um, some of this, but we're going to, so you don't need to translate that part. <laughs> but we basically, this is a little bit of a longer sentence right here. Just ignore that. That's just there for context. Like something to the Japanese or? Uh, I don't think so. So, I, the e part e. of so, if you're talking about Nippon, uh, it's ni as in like the country and then hon like origin. So, I'm pretty sure this is not related at all. This is e from like uh, hitotsu, for example. Which, hey. what, what does hitotsu mean? One person. Yes. Or well, alone. That'd be a uh, story. Story would be one person. Oh, thoughts is one thing. So we're here. We have that each is meaning one, and then we have pon. So pon or hon can be used as a counter for some reason to refer to long circular kind of ish, like uh, not circular but a cylinder, cylinderish ish shapes. And because of that, mm. for whatever reason, a nawabashigo gives off a cylinderish shape, I guess. So I see. So ippon no nawabashigo. What does that mean? Ippon no uh, nawabashigo. So one rope ladder. Yes, exactly. There's only one. So all together, remember what no and wa is doing here? Hi. What does it say? So, Ani ga uh, you sashite. Okay, so Ani is the subject, keep that in mind. And you sashite is pointing i, iru no wa. So, it's pointing towards ippon no uh, nawabashigo. So, there's one rope ladder which is being Dada, not sure what dada means. Mm. Dada. So you're thinking about ta, tada or something like that. But datta, I... oh, sorry, dat, datta is the past tense form of da, like this, <laughs> which means yeah, yeah. It's basically it's the copula, if you want the big words for it. Um, I realize this might be like hard to like. Uh, express because there is a little thing here that's kind of being like dropped out um this is like a rewording of the sentence of Annie got no nawabashigo o yubisashite iru what happened over here yubisashite iru this right here and this whole phrase over here basically have the same meaning, but it's just reworded in a different way by using Noah. So this actually says, uh, first off, what, do you, what does this part right here say? What does that mean? So, what was that word? Nawabashigo. Oh, so one rope ladder. Shiteiru, or where is that word? Yubi uh, sashiteiru. Uh, so she is pointing towards one rope ladder. Yes. Or Annie is pointing towards one rope ladder. Annie points at one rope ladder. And this rewording of this is the thing Annie was pointing at was one rope ladder. Is what it's saying. So it changes like what is important. 
the fact he's pointing or like it, it's like it's like before it was kind of boring and he points at a at a rope ladder who cares right. the thing and he points that was it was a rope ladder so this makes it like more expressive it, it kind of makes it more underlining <laughs> Not a lot. But yeah, so this no right here is allowing us to move the verb up here so it can go to Dwa to tell us that the subject is the not Annie. Annie's not the subject. The subject is the thing that is being pointed at. So we have a nanika o. So nanika is what's been dropped off. Nanika o yubi sashiteru. So the one doing the action is Annie. That's why Annie has a ga here. But the thing that's important but like the subject is the pointing. So Annie is pointing at something and it's this. <laughs> so like the pointing is the subject. Yeah, so in a, way. in a way, that's basically what they've done. Yeah, it's a kind of weird way to think, to look at it. And then they say this, can you read it for me? Uh, nante, uh, nagai. Nawabashi go na or nanda. Yes. So yeah, nante is just, you know, uwa, kind of same meaning basically. <laughs> uwa. Nante. Nagai nawabashi go nanda. Nagai nawabashi go nanda. So like, whoa, that's a long rope ladder. Exactly. Beautiful. 100%. Oop, I think I went backwards. Hi. So now we have a new word. Can you read it for me? Uh, futatte, or futats ni wakare, or wakare nai. Wakare ru. Wakare ru. Wakare ru. What do you think this means? Futats wakare ru. So two, I don't know. Or sorry, no. Two. What's going on in this little gif in the corner? Hmm. hmm. There's one futatsu ni splits wakareru. into two. Yes. <laughs> so what does futatsu ni wakareru mean? Uh, become two. Yes. It splits into two. That's what it means. Interesting. So wakareru means, what do you think wakareru on its own means? Wakareru. Wakareru. Um, That's a kanji for to bet. become or to split. It is to split. To split, and the kanji has the same meaning uh, as the same kanji as betsu, which means different. So it's like making things different. So to split into two, so to split. Then we have ni. Do you know what the particle ni does? Mm, well, usually it's about like direction and location. I mean, so here it could the be the way in which it splits is in futatsu, which means two, two things. So it splits into two things. How would you change wakareru into te form? Uh, wakarete or wakarete. Yes, wakarete. Exactly. Wakarete. Wakarete. Now we are checking. Do you know what kara and made means, such as in the sentence of Koko kara to soko made. Mm, koko kara. Uh, uh, uh. So from here to soko made, which is over there, kind yeah. of. So this is from, and this right here, made means like until. So from here until there. If we delayed it koko and just said soko made, koko is insinuated. Somewhere in the it just it just been dropped. They're like obviously it's where I don't know the protagonist is standing and soko made or whatever. Until there. Until there. Now we're doing some more vocabulary. Um, can you do me a favor and read these two words? These are opposites. Hi. <clears throat> uh, sakai and oh, haruka. Ah, oh, sikai. Sikai. Me. Kai. Not sa. Ah, oh, chikai. Yes. Shikai and haruka. 
You know what chikai means? Chikai means close. Yeah, so what does haruka mean if it's the opposite? Haruka would mean far. Yes, it means far. How about these two opposites? We have tomaru and tsuzuku. Yes. So tomaru is to close or to stop, sorry. Close. Yeah, to stop. It's to stop, yes. Uh, tomeru. Close tomaru. is not a to, but I'm like, I don't think it's tomaru. Uh, I can't think on top of my head. But yeah, it means to stop. And what does suzuku mean if it doesn't mean to stop? Suzuku means to continue. Yes, exactly. And what is this word up here? Ita. I mean, it sounds like ita. Ah, eda. 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 What could an eda be? Uh, branches. Yes, a branch. Exactly. And it has inside of it the kanji for tree. A little tree right here for our eda. And our last word on here is tokoro. Do you know what tokoro, tokoro. means? Tokoro means here or like place. It, it just means place, yes. And in this place. place, unlike the English word place, tends to also have the meaning of time or things like that. But it's probably just place here. Um, next is tuzuku. What is the te form of tuzuku? Tsutte uh, or yeah, tsutte. 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 Get a little. Tsutte. Yes. Tsutte. Tsutte. And now we have our sentence to read. Got a nice long guy. I don't know why hey. that's that was supposed to be the periods over here. <laughs> Don't know how that got over there. E P P. Ah, so it was Jack no Atama no Haruka Ue Ue It Ah Ida ga Futatsu Ah Ida ga Futatsu ni Wakareru Ah sorry Wakarete Wakarete iru Tokoro made Tsuzuite iru so first off, what does ue mean? Ue, uh, if I remember, I think it was to say or utter. That's, I think you're thinking of koe. Ew. Voice maybe, or you. Yeah, you is the one I was thinking okay. about. We're actually at ue. Does it look ue. a little bit familiar? Earlier we saw shita. Hi. That's the opposite, opposite one. Yeah. Oh, now I remember. Yeah, it's superior or someone on top of you or above, okay. I'm guessing. Above. So, jaku no atama no haruka ue. What does this mean? Jaku no atama no haruka ue. So, on top of Jack's body, or sorry, head, there's a haru. And haru means a couple things. Uh, so that was the opposite it, it, of chikai, if you remember, from our last page. Ah, so it would be far. Yes. So therefore. So far above Jack's head. Head. So far above Jack's head. Yes. Jack no atama no haruka ue. So far above Jack's head. This exists. Eda ga futatsu ni wakareru tokoro. So a branch split into two. two. Yes. And then we have um, made tsuzuite ru. Made. Sore wa. Sore wa to the splitting into two branches. Made tsuzuite ru. Made tsuzuite. Okay, so Suzuite you is, if I remember, to continue. Yes. And made, eh, 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 what was made? Was made the, was. Kare, I mean, kara. As in, koko kara. Ah. Koko made. Made. So, until it continues. So, until is being attached 
to ega futatsu ni wakarete iru tokoro. It is not being attached to Suzuku. Hi. So until it splits into, not sorry, until it, yes, splits into two. Yes. It continues until it splits into two, the branches. Eda. So altogether, this is that thing continues far above Jack's head until it splits into two. What do you think he's talking about by that? The tree yep. that is on top of him. The tree trunk. The tree trunk is continuing far above his head until it splits into two branches. Ah, なるほど。Yes, it's an interesting sentence. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like それは、uh, in their defense, the last sentence was um he was uh pointing at like the treehouse or like the. Oh, rope ladder. Rope ladder. Right. That makes you go like, "Hey, is the rope ladder spinning too?" Flip, flip this way. <laughs> this was farther than I thought. It's about time. So I'm gonna grab the picture real quick. Ah, yeah. I went past the picture. Yeah, I was like, wait, <laughs> did the press, did the, they didn't draw that. Yeah, now I'll go back to where we were before. <laughs> Hi. Oh, cool. So that's where we are. Um, since it's your birthday, we can continue for one more line. Do you want to do that? Cool. Yeah. Okay. Views. Okay. So right now, we are doing something we've already read before. Do you remember what? Te form plus a random verb means. I have an example sentence that we, was from earlier in the book in case you need a refresher. あ、あ、どこに怪獣がいるんだよ。ジャックはうんえうんざりしていた。うんざりしていた。あて、and a random word. Mm. So te irita or ita. Mm. Te ndariste plus ita. A different example could be aruite uh, hanasteru. Aruite hanasteru. It's like let go of me, I think. That'd be a. That, that, that's right, depending on the kanji. <laughs> Um, hanasteiru. Hanasu has uh, this kanji that's right below me. Hanasu, hanasteiru, which kind of has like an X inside of it, like it's dame. <laughs> X. Uh, this hanasu has iu, like this iu. And it means uh, to like have a conversation, basically. Hanasteiru. So, aruite mm. means to walk and have a conversation, whatever. Aruite hanasteiru. And unzari ste ita means to say while being fed up. Toko ni kaiju ga yun da yo. To say while being fed up. To say, uh, kaiju. Well, where is that kaiju? That's what he's saying. So te form plus random verb, what does that mean? Te plus a random word would, sorry, verb mm -hmm. would kind of connect the two. Yes, it means you're doing the two actions at the same time. It's not action uh, one, then action two. Action it is two. same time. Very important if it's a verb right afterwards. If something else follows, it could be something different. Like if it was te form, then like the sentence continues or something. But this is te form, then verb. Right afterwards is same time. Uh, now, yes, a bunch of new vocabulary. First off, do you know yeah. what me means? Uh, me on its own means ice. Yes. Or, yeah. And our new verb for it is korase. For example, what the guy's doing in this image? He's doing korasu. He's squinting. Yes. Korasu means to kind of squint your eyes. 
So how would you connect me and korasu together? What particle would go in between them? What is our glue? Mm, korasu. So verb, something, adjective. And to do that, we would use an me o korasu? Yes, korasu. exactly. Oh, because me is the um, direct object of the verb. Object. So to squint to your eyes, me o korasu. Perfect. Next word is this guy. Can you read it for me? Uh, kia or koya. 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 Yes. Koya. And koya is made up of the kanji from chisai and heya. What do you think koya means? Hmm. Mm -mm. So small house or small yeah. room. Small house is what it means. Small room is a good guess. But yes. Small house is exactly what it means. Um, nokaru just means to um be on basically to like like this this house is on this specifically it means like to climb something but like to have the be on top of something basically i guess in a climby like mm -hmm. way but it, it doesn't have to be in the action of climbing so so you can think of it as on top in this context that you'll be seeing there next we have this word can you read it for me uh shikakoi shikakoi yes so does the kanji here look a little bit familiar it reminds me of nishi or west it does look a lot like west um it is the same kanji in yon you know you yes yon yon or she is another way this kanji is commonly pronounced, like shigatsu no shi. Shigatsu. Oh, shigatsu. Yep. You know what month is shigatsu? Ichi ni sanchi. Uh, fourth month. Yeah. So January, February, April. Yep. April. So this kanji means four. Shikaku. So, for example, a shikaku is this shape. What shape is this? It is a square. Yes. How many sides does a square have? Four sides. What is this thing in the corner? These are the vertices. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was looking for the word corner. Oh, <laughs> corner. <laughs> and I said, uh, kaku just means corners. <laughs> and it's, it's a pretty common word. What do you think triangle is in Japanese? Uh, so, shikakui. Uh, sankui. Sankaku. 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 Uh, so, the E right here was throwing you off. So, shikaku means square. Shikakui means squarish. Because mm. square is a noun and shikakui is an adjective. Right? It ends with an E. So it's Hi. describing something as squarey. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go back here for a second. Do you remember what it means to be aruite and hanashiteiru? Aruite, hanashiteiru. So a conversation aruite while walking. So yes. walking conversation. Exactly. Happening at the same time. Perfect. Ooh. Oh, yes. Uh, so te form doesn't just exist for verbs. It also exists for adjectives and I think nouns in some weird cases, uh, but mostly adjectives can also have these. And this is used because some things you can't say in Japanese the same way you can say in English. For example, we can say the small expensive ball. Great sentence. You have adjective, adjective ball. Great. Hi. However, we said chisai takai boru. That's horrible. Well, what did you do? <laughs> Stop that. Instead, you have to turn the one far away from boru into a te. Got to got to get into te form. Is what you got to do. Now, I'd like you to make a random guess how chisai gets into te form. You will get this wrong, <laughs> but okay. I just want you to guess. If you get it right, that'd be weird. <laughs> uh, something like. Because I is there after remove the chite. 
It'd be tisa kute. We add ah, the absolutely kute. random ku into it. Kute. I gets deleted and ku gets added. And that is very common in Japanese for e adjectives to get a ku. There's other things that ku will appear. It's just, I, I don't know. Maybe it used to be ki and k got dropped off. Chisaki. That sounds wrong. Chisaki. Don't learn that. <laughs> but yeah, it becomes cute. Cool. So, uh, what is the te form of nagai? Uh, so, nigakute. Nagakute. Nagakute. How about takai? Takakute. Yes. And how about tanoshi? Tanoshi. Oh, tanoshi. So it is kind of hard to say tanoshikute. That is hard to say. And people in Japan agree with you. So they tend to say tanoshikute rather than pronouncing it. E tends to be kind of just not there. <laughs> so they agree with you. That is hard to say. And once again, what is the te from chisai? Uh, chisai kute. Chisai kute. Oh, Got to make sure there's no e there. Hai. Got to kill that guy. Perfect. And I think. Here we are at our long ass sentence. Let's try it. Me o korashite or me o korashite yoku miruto soku niwa chisaikte or chisokte shikakui shikakui ki shikakui ki no a koyaga no tsukate ita. Nokateita. So we actually said uh, like noga, I think, rather than gano, and that's what confused you. I think I think I heard that. Noka. Oh, yeah. Uh so easy to split this up into smaller parts. What does this part mean? Mi o kurashite. So the eye is kurashite. Oh, uh squinting. Exactly. The eye is squinting. And then what's happening is a verb directly after it. Miru. Yoko miru. So, a look. Or, I mean, just look. So, looking while squinting his eyes in a yoku kind of way. What does yoku mean? Yoku. Yoku, yoku. Might have seen it as e in some context, contexts. Yoku e. Hmm. <laughs> no, just e. Like, uh, yoku. Gatta and e. Yogatta. Yeah. Uh, ah. Yoku. Yoku si masta ne. <laughs> I don't know. These are uh, e and yoku are the same word. E. Yoku. So is like. It. You know how ku. Okay. Here's for e adjectives sometimes, and then they're like iku. They're like, oop, that I... sounds too much like the verb. Whoa. Sounds too much like the verb iku. <laughs> so got to turn it into yoku. They're like, it's confusing. They're like, ah, no, can't do that. Dame. Dame da yo. So yoku just means good. <laughs> so so the look, so, so taking a good look, because he squints his eyes, you know, they take a good look. So squinting and looking well, basically. And do you know what this to is doing? So it's not the to for words. Mm. I'm guessing it's for sentences. So yeah. this and whatever is yep. coming next. Yep. And then, or so you look, and then he's able to see this. Now, this is a long way to describe a koya. You got a chisakute shikakui ki no koya. Let's start with kinokoya. What does that mean? Kinokoya. So the tree is a koya, or it is koya. And koya mm -hmm. was... Kitai uh, heya. Ah, a small house. Yes. So what would a small house made of tree, what would that be? That would be a tree house. Yes, tree house, kinokoya, tree house, onajimi. Ah, tree house. <laughs> onajimi. Now, 
Right here, we have two E adjectives that have not been turned into na adjectives. So, chisakte shikakui kinokoya. What does that mean? Chisakte shikakui. Chikakui. What was that? That was a four sided shape. Yes. Um, chikakte. So it's close. To, so four sided shape is close to the treehouse. So chisai actually means small. Oh, chisai. I read that as chika. So houses can be in lots of weird shapes. Like, for example, um, Japanese element, tree schools kind of look like this. Did you know? Um, my house, I think, looks like this. One, two, three, four, five. Hi. One, two, three, four, five. As you can see, these have lots of uh, sides to them. How many sides do you think the small house has? Um, it has, shikaku. It has four sides. Yes, it's a, it's just a four-sided small house. That's what we want to specify. Um, the point of the e adjective is that the tree is not four-sided. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Remember that from way earlier today. And tsaku just means small. So not only is it a koya, a small house, but it's super small. So it's a say small house. We need to say it's a small little small house. Small little small house. Now we have nokatte ita and soko niwa. Soko niwa is referring to the uh, futatsu uh, eda ga futatsu ni wareta tokoro. Is the soko niwa. Eda. So what does basically the splitting of the branches? Yes. And so this koya at that location is doing no cut data. No cut data. What did I tell you that what did I tell you that that meant? No cut data. Hmm. Uh, ta, tas, no cut. Kadu, I think, yeah, kind of. It's very similar to no boru, but it, in this context, it's being used to mean like ueni for some reason. Ueni. It, it means it's on. So it's sitting at that location. For example, right there. Pretending there's, there's branches right here. <laughs> the, the four house. The four-sided house is sitting right over at that location where the two branches split out. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. That's the nokaru. Oh. And boop, boop. So right over here, I have changed this sentence so that it has the meaning that this tree is rectangular. How did I get that yeah. meaning? Yoku. Hi. So there, where you said yoku. Nope. Actually, no, that's not it. That yoku was last... something that was good, wasn't it? That was yeah. good. Yoku that was left good. over from the last page. I didn't clear everything. <laughs> Trying to cheat. Miruto soko ni wa. Chisai ko shikaku na. I mean, the na is bolded here. Yes, it is the na versus the e. So na, when it's an e adjective originally, makes a very close bond to whatever noun directly follows it. And the noun that directly follows na is ki. So if you remember from way early, I think like the first sentence we did, we had a different sentence that was like, oki, oki na, 
なんだろう。What was really big? <laughs> Okina. Something, something, something. And Green made, something. Like, oh, it, it was like a k a s i k a s i hi. Kasi, which meant evergreen tree. Oki kasi no ki. Ki no sita. Which was below the humongous kashi tree. So、below、if it was oki, oki kashi no. Oops. No. Ki no sita. What would this mean? Eh, 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 oki, oki. Saraka, this is a k a Kashi just means evergreen tree. Ah, kashi no kino shita. So under the big green tree or green. So when it's、tree. E, it becomes the under big, the, the big under. The big under. The big, it modifies under. So this as it doesn't make sense in Japanese just because under cannot be big. Like it, 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 it's kind of like, what does that mean? But、yes. this sentence right here that we had over here on this page, both things, we could have a square tree, as you can see in this beautiful picture I found on the internet. <laughs> that square trees do exist. So theoretically, the meaning could both versions exist. They had the E version because they wanted to modify koya、right. rather than、uh, ki. But the last sentence, they wanted to modify kashi and not shita. So they did na. That kind of makes sense how they're different. So, like, E is the, the one after all the no's, kind of, and na is the direct after one. Exactly. That's how they're different. So it's just wow, isn't that cool? You、It's、would not have thought that in Japanese class. Because <laughs> I have never heard of that. I just, you know it, I feel like just by like context, because like it makes like nothing, it wouldn't make sense if you're talking about a square tree. You know, I'd be like, why would you say that? Just context, you can just know it. But it's interesting that grammarly, it also contains that meaning. But yeah, no adjectives directly connected. So now that is where we'll be ending for today. And happy birthday! Thanks again. Yep.